My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 55. Day, day 3055, 3 is to that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 55, we are on page 261 where we have some algebra exercises. Let's take a look at them, shall we? Problem number one. Problem number one talks about algebraic expressions. Algebraic expression. Why don't we, why don't we erase this thing? Algebraic, algebraic expressions. Let's take a look at part A, shall we? It says square of y, square of y is subtracted. from 5. The result we are told, the result is multiplied by 37. I hope that you have the book in front of you. Despite the fact that I actually put down the whole problem on the blackboard, I will not do that all the time. You have to have, you must have the book in front of you so you can follow the work easily and properly. So let's see what we have. We have square of y. It says square of y. So we have y, let's some quantity y. We're going to square it and then we're going to subtract 5 from it. Is that, is that what it says? Is that what it says? It says square of y is subtracted from 5. That's not what we have here. Here what we have is that we are subtracting 5 from the square of y. It is not the 5 that is subtracted from, that is to be subtracted from y squared, square of y, but rather it says it is the square of y that is to be subtracted from 5. This thing is wrong. From 5, we have 5 here, and from 5 we have to subtract square of y. So that's what that is. It goes on to say that the result is multiplied by 37. So you take the result, which is, which is this is, and multiply by 37, and that's it. We are done. That's the answer. Let's look at part B. It says three times three times x is squared and the result is divided by seven. It says 3 times x is squared. So here, here we have some quantity x. Here we have some quantity x. We don't want x by itself. We don't want x by itself. We want 3 times x. So let's multiply it by 3. So now we have 3 times x. And what do we do with 3 times x? We are told to take this quantity 3 times x. 3 times x is squared. So we're going to square the whole quantity. Voila. 3 times x is squared. The result is then divided by 7. So there is the result divided by 7 and we are done. That's part B. Let's move on to part C. Part C says product of x plus 4 and y is added to 18 is added to 18. So let's take a look at it, shall we? Product of x plus 4, here we have x plus 4 and y, so there is the product. You can write it just like that if you want, or you can put the y in front of it, doesn't matter, or we can put the parentheses around y, it makes no difference. What do we do with this product? It's to be added to 18. There we go. So we're simply going to add 18 to it. Now what we have done here is, as, we, as I just said, we're simply going to add 18 to it. But we were not asked to add 18 to it. We, are, we were asked, we were told to take this quantity. It says this quantity is to be 
added 218. It is to be added, added 218. But because it's addition, it doesn't matter whether we put it in the front or in the back, it doesn't matter. It's only in the subtraction part that you have to be careful where you have to know is 3 to be subtracted from 10 or it is that or is it the 10 that is being subtracted from 3? Because if 3 is subtracted from 10, the answer is positive 7. But if it is the 10 that is being subtracted from 3, then it is negative 7. Only in that scenario, only, only when the subtraction is involved, we have to be careful about the language. Addition, it really doesn't matter whether you add 3 to 7 or 7 to 3, it's the same thing. Let's move on. Problem number 2. Problem number 2. In problem number two, we are simply asked to simplify. We are given algebraic expression and our job is simply to put it in the simplest form. Notice how I finished my sentence because I realized that it would have been silly for me to finish my sentence by saying our job is simply to simplify. That would have been silly. So I finished it by saying that our job is simply to put it in the simplest form. It sounds a little bit you're not repeating the word simply. Anyway, simple rather. So here's the first one, 2a. 3x squared minus 6 plus x plus 11 minus x squared plus 5x. Is that all there is? Yes. Let's see what we can do. So here, what we're going to do here is what is known as combining, combine what are known as the like terms. And what do we mean by like terms? What does the word like mean? Not like as in I like you, that's not what it means here. Like as in similar. Like as in similar. What's the antonym of similar? Antonym of similar is dissimilar. What's the antinomy of like? Antinomy of like in this case would be, in this context would be unlike. Unlike that, which means dissimilar. It's not same. So our job is to combine the terms that are similar. Some combine the like terms. So let's begin, shall we? So here we see one term here involves x squared. Here we see another term that involves x squared and we have only one of them. So we have positive 3 and a negative 1. Positive 3 and a negative 1 is going to give us positive 2 x squared. Now let's take care of the x here. Then we have, then we have positive positive one x and a positive five x right here. So that's going to give us positive six x. And then finally, we do the constants. We do the constants. We have we have a negative six and a positive eleven. Positive eleven and negative six is positive five. Well, that's our answer. The answer is two x squared plus six x plus 5. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. Part B. We have 3 times 5x minus 1 minus x plus 4. Let's see what we can do. First thing we need to do is open the parenthesis here. Open the parenthesis. 3 times 5x is going to be 15x. 3 times negative 1 is going to give us negative 3. Then we have negative x and then we have 4. Let's see what we can do. Again, same thing. We're going to combine the like terms, all the terms involving x's and all the terms that are constant. So here we have here we have 15 x's, here we have 15 x's, and here we have negative 1 x. So let's combine them. 15 and a negative 1, that's going to give us 14 x. And then we have then we have a negative 3 and a positive 4. Negative 3 and a positive 4 is going to give us positive 1. That's all. That's all there is. Straightforward, simple. Let's do the next one. Part C. Part C is a little tricky. Part C we have x squared minus 16 and x minus 4. So here, here it actually does involve simplifying this expression. We're not talking about, we're no longer talking about combining the like terms because there are no like terms here to combine. Here we have to simplify it. 
what we need to understand here is this. I need the room, so I'm going to erase this, this thing here. If we look at the top part, the numerator, we have x squared minus 16. x squared minus 16, which of course is same, I'm not making any better, which of course is same as x squared minus 4 squared. Which, which now we have to understand that this is this, what we need to do here is our think of x our x is a quantity a minus b is 4 so a squared minus b squared I hope you know this identity a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b and that's what we have to do here our a our a is x and our b is 4 do you understand because you see, if you open it, you're going to get, if you, if, you, if you open it, we get a squared, a times negative b is going to give us negative ab, positive b times a is going to give us positive ab, and then b times negative b is going to give us negative b squared, negative ab and positive ab cancel out, and we end up with a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So a plus b would be x plus 4, x, a is our x and b is our 4. A a plus b would be x plus 4 on the top and a minus b would be x minus 4 and on the bottom we have x minus 4 you see now what they mean by simplify when we see that we have x minus 4 on the top and the bottom we divide top and bottom by x minus 4 they cancel out and we are left with just x plus 4 is our answer let's move on part d in part D we have 2x plus 5 times 3x minus 1. Let's open the parenthesis, see what we can do, see what we can achieve. 2x times 3x is going to give us 6x squared. 2 times 3 is 6 and then x squared. 2x times negative 1 is going to give us negative 2x. Five, positive 5 times positive 3. Positive 3x is going to give us positive 15x. And finally we are going to have positive 5 times negative 1 is going to give us negative 5. There is not much here to combine. x squared is going to stay by itself because there are no, because there are no other terms involving x squared. That's the only term. So it's just going to come down. And there are no other constant except negative 5, so that's going to come down. We just have to combine these two. We have a negative 2x and a positive 15. Negative 2 and a positive 15 is positive 13. There we go. That's our answer. Our answer is 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. That's it. Let's move on. Problem number 3. Problem number 3. It says, what's the value of f of x? What's the value of f of x for a given value of x? We are given some function f of x, for example, in number 3, for example, in number 3a, our function that is given to us, f of x, is 3x squared minus 7x plus 23. And the question simply is, question simply is, what's the value of this function? when x happens to be negative 2. When x happens to be negative 2, all we have to do is, so f of negative 2, this is how it's read. This is read as f of negative 2. f of negative 2, just like f of x, which means the value of the function x, value of the function, this function right here, when x happens to be equal to negative 2. So wherever we see x, we're going to replace it with negative 2. So 3, times negative 2 squared pay attention it is negative 2 being squared minus 7 times negative 2 x is negative 2 plus the 23 negative 2 squared negative but, but, but when you square the negative negative times negative is going to become positive so this is simply this is simply 3 times 4 so 3 times positive 4 and negative and negative is going to become positive 14 and a positive 23 and we just simply have to add them up. This is a 12, 12x 
12 plus 14 plus 23, whatever that happens to be. 12, 3, 4, 12 plus, let's, let's do it together, shall we? 12 plus 12 would have been 24, so 12 plus 14 is going to be 26. 26 plus 23, 26 plus 23 would be 49. 6 and, six and a 3 is going to give us 9. Let's do part B. In part B we have h of x we are told is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. And we are asked to find the value of this function when x happens to equal to positive 2. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's see what we can do. So it's going to get 2 cubed because we replace wherever we see x we replace it with 2. Minus 2 times 2 squared plus 2 and a negative 2. See we replace x with 2. So let's see what we can do here. The first thing first thing we notice is that we have a we have a positive 2 and a negative 2 so they're going to kill each other. And the second thing we notice is that 2 times 2 squared, 2 times 2 squared is same as 2 cubed. So positive 2 cubed and a negative 2 cubed, they're going to kill each other. So it turns out that the answer to this particular problem is a big fat zero. Not a regular one, a big fat one. Let's continue. Let's continue. Part C. k of x we are told is equal to 5 third x minus 7 and the question is what's the value of this function when k is 0 or when, when x is 0 well it's very simple it's very silly it's just going to be 5 thirds times 0 minus 7 and of course 0 times anything is 0, zero so it's 0 minus 7 it's just negative 7 so that takes care of problem number 3 Let's move on. Let's see how much progress we can make. Problem number four. In number four, we have a function y, uh, sorry, a function g, a function whose name is g, and it's a function of y. It's some function where it depends on the variable y. It's the g of y and we are told the g of y happens to equal to simply y over the absolute value of y. And we are being asked to find out the value of this particular function for three different, for three different given values of y's. Let's do it together, shall we? y when it is equal to 2, when y is equal to negative 2 and then the difference of the two functions. Let's find out, shall we? So part a is g of 2. y is equal to 2, you see? y is equal to 2. So here we have y, so it's going to be 2 over the absolute value of 2. Absolute value of 2 is just 2. So it's just 2 over 2 is just 1. Let's do the next one. g of negative 2 is going to be a little bit more interesting because on the top we are going to have y, which in this case is negative 2. y is negative 2 over the absolute value of negative 2. Well, the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, but on the top, the negative 2 remains negative 2. So negative 2 divided by positive 2 is going to give us negative 1. And finally, the difference of the two, two functions, g of 2 minus the g of negative 2, what do you suppose that is going to be? Pay attention, okay? Just pay very close attention. Don't just say zero. Let's just close, slow down. G of 2 we just found out is 1. Minus G of negative 2, which we just found out is negative. This negative 1. G, G of negative 2, we just found out, is negative 1. 
So it is 1 minus a negative 1. This is, where we're, this is what I meant by pay attention. Don't just say 0. So 1 minus a negative 1. A negative and a negative can become positive. This negative and this negative can become positive. So it's 1 plus 1. It gives us 2 and not a 0. Do you understand? Let's move on. Problem number 5. Problem number 5. Problem number five is simply asking us to simplify the given expression. Essentially, they are testing here whether or not we know the rules of exponents. That's all it is. The entire problem number five, it has six parts to it, six or seven parts to it, or eight parts maybe. We just, they just want to see if we know our rules of exponents. So first one says, the first one says, n to the fifth times n to the negative third. Now instead of writing it like this, times like this, they actually put parentheses around it. It makes no difference. It's the same thing. What do we do with the exponents when the bases are the same? This is n, this is n, the bases are the same. What do we do with the exponents? We add the exponents. n to the n minus 3 because this is 5 and this is negative 3 5 minus 3 is 2 so it becomes n, n squared too simple too straightforward part b part b says s to the 7 times t to the 7 s to the 7 times to the 7. What do we do here? Here the bases are no longer the same. Here it is some value s that is being raised to 7th power and here it is some other value that is raised to 7th power. Bases are different but the powers are same. Since the powers are same we can put them together. s raised to 7 and t raised to 7 is same as s times t the whole quantity raised to 7. And that's all. You can leave it like this. Or we can get rid of the multiplication sign and we simply write st raised to 7. Same thing. Same exact thing. Part C. Part C says r raised to 12 divided by r raised to 4. Oh, what do we do when they are being divided? If the base is the same, this is r and this is r. But here we have is divided, it's no longer being multiplied. When it's divided, we take the exponents 12 and we subtract the bottom exponents. So it's r raised to 12 minus 4, which gives us r raised to 8. Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on. By the way, if you're interested, this exercise that we are doing from the third edition. They happen to be the exact same problems, they happen to be the exact same exercises that appeared in the first and the second edition. If you are interested in watching the original series, this problem that we are doing just now, you can find them on day number 139. Day 139. Just type in GRE Math Day 139 and you will find the exact same exercises. D. 2a over b raised to 5. 2a over b raised to 5. I want to make sure that I... This is t. I just want to make sure... Yes, exactly. Let's see what we can do here. 2a raised to 5. The whole thing is being raised to 5, which is same as 2 raised to 5 times a raised to 5 over b raised to 5. This is how we open it. What else can we do with it? Well, not, there is not much we can do with a raised to 5 and b raised to 5, but this thing is a constant. 2 raised to 5, we have to figure out what that is equal to. So let's do it, shall we? 2 raised to 1 is 2, 2 raised to 2 is going to be 4, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. 2 raised to 5 is 32. So it is simply 32 raised 
32 times a raised to 5 over b raised to 5. That was part D. Let's move on to part E. Part E says W raised to 5, the whole thing raised to negative 3. What do we do with the exponents when it's, when it's W raised to 5 and the whole thing is raised to negative 3? We can multiply the exponent. This is going to be W raised to 5 times negative 3 which is same as w raised to negative 15. We can leave it like this if you want, or if they want the exponents to be positive, then you have to put it in a reciprocal form. It is same as 1 over w raised to positive 5. Do you understand? That was part E. Let's look at F. As I said, if you are lost here, because I'm not explaining anything, I'm not explaining much at all, if you, if you need the ex actual explanations into nitty-gritty details, then watch the original series based on the first edition on day, uh, day number 139, as I said. In that series, I do actually take the time to actually explain the rules of exponents. Uh, just type in GRE Math, day 139, it will pop right up. And if it doesn't pop up, just put in my name along with it, Keshwani. Part F. It says 5 raised to 0 times d raised to 3. 5 raised to 0 times d raised to 3. What, what can we do with it? Here in this one, in this, this particular one, I will actually explain it. Here we have 5 raised to 0. What we have to know is that any number, any number, doesn't matter what that number is, any number raised to 0, raised to 0 equals 1. Any number raised to 0 equals 1. That's what they want to test here. So this is simply this is simply 1 times d raised to 3, which is simply d raised to 3. The answer simply is d raised to 3. This was part F. We still have some ways to go. Let's finish it up. Part G. Part G. I need, I need room again. I'm going to erase it. It gets to be too much, doesn't it? X raised to 10 times Y raised to negative 1 over X raised to negative 5 times y raised to 5. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. You see, when we, when we bring these exponents to the top, it's going to become, so this is same as x raised to 10 over x raised to negative 5, it, if, if it helps you, times y raised to negative 1 over y raised to 5. That's what this is, it's the same thing. Let's, let's take care of this thing. So when we bring this on the top, it's going to become x raised to, let's line it up properly, x raised to 10 minus whatever exponents that we see on the bottom. That's where you have to pay attention. So it's 10 minus a negative 5. Now what's going to happen to y? Well, if we bring the y to the top, listen very carefully. If we try to bring this exponent to the top, this is going to become negative 5. This is already negative 1, and negative 5 and a negative 1 is going to give us negative 6. We don't want negative exponents on the top. It's much better to bring this down. So leave the bottom one here, x raised to 5, and bring this negative to the bottom. So it's going to be minus a negative 1. Do you understand? And well, that's it. It is simply x raised to 15 over y raised to 6. I'm not sure exactly how the answers are presented in the book. But this is one way of doing it. I'm just going to take a second and actually look at it. Make sure that you don't get confused. This was number G, number 5G. Yes, that's exactly how they give it. They give the positive exponents because that's the convention, that is the rule, that is the tradition. Do you understand? It would not have been wrong, it would not have been wrong for us to write x raised to 15 times y raised to negative 6. This is also perfectly fine. It is correct. This is also a correct answer and so is this one. 
but the convention dictates but the convention dictates that we express the exponent as positive numbers. So what we do instead of leaving it on the top, we bring it to the bottom. That was G. Let's look at the last part, H. It says 3x over y, 3x over y squared divided by 1 over y to the fifth. Let's see what we can do. Let's leave this for the time being here. 3x, 3x over y squared. Leave it here. Let's first take care of the division sign. Here we have the division sign. When one fraction, which is what this is, being divided by another fraction, what we do is we multiply it by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So 1 over y is simply going to become y times y raised to 5. Do you understand? Or if you like y over 1 raised to 5, if it makes it easier for you, instead of 1 over y, it's going to be y over 1 raised to 5. And now we can work on it. So 3x to squared, 3 squared is 9, so it's going to be 9x squared, and this is y squared times y raised to 5. Let's put this y squared underneath this guy. y to the fifth over y squared is simply y raised to 5 minus 2, which is y cubed, which is y cubed. So that's our answer. 9x to the 9x squared y cubed. And that was the end of number 5. I think I'm going to stop here because if I keep on going, the question number 6 is a little bit involved. And if we try to do question 6 in the same video, it's going to be, get to be too much. Let's stop right here. Do you understand? Yes. Question 6F I can see involves a little bit of explaining. 6E. I want to spend some time on 6E. So, in the next video, in the next video, we will do only problem number 6. Only problem number six on the next video. Let's see what problem seven is. Yes, problem number seven is simultaneous equation. But it's going to be a long video because there are some things that I want to go over above and beyond what is in the book. You understand? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.